let's get real for a minute. So I wanted to talk to you about therapy and specifically how therapy has helped me get closer to God. And to give a little bit of a background, when I was 19, 20, like just turning 20, I started to have really bad panic attacks and a lot of anxiety and I was falling apart and I needed help. And thankfully, through the help of a friend, I was able to start talking to a Christian counselor. And just to do a side note, um, I highly recommend any counselor or therapist or psychologist, anyone trained with helping you understand your mind that you're going to go to, to find a Christian one. Because when you're talking about something so vital to who you are and so intimate to who you are, it's very helpful to have someone who has the same faith that you do so that they don't turn you away from God and try and convince you that God's not real. My background in faith was legalism. And legalism has no grace. Legalism is all about the law. And Paul talks about this a lot. And really, Paul was a legalist until he met Jesus, until Jesus showed up on the road to Damascus. But legalism is very, very hard. There is almost no grace or mercy for you, the follower of Jesus, if your view of God comes from legalism. What this this did to me was feed me the message, the belief that I am too broken. I'm too broken to be accepted and I need to fix me. And I thought I was too broken for God. Like I had to fix all these things about me before I could really be loved by him. And that is so not true. The only biblically correct aspect of that belief is the brokenness because I am broken and you're broken. All of humanity is broken, but we cannot fix ourselves and we are not required by God to fix ourselves before we come to him. He wants us. He came while we were still sinners to die for us. He wants you as you are. Don't think anything different. My counselor, one of the very first things she had me to do was read Psalm 145 and think about it and tell her anything in it that stood out to me would like to read Psalm 145 to you, and I'm going to do it kind of quickly because it's a little longer. So, bear with me. A song of praise of David. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and, your, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and, get, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. 
He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Now, verses 8 through 9, that says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. I did not see him that way at all. At all. And to be honest with you, I still struggle with seeing him as he really is. And not just struggling to see him as gracious and merciful and slow to anger, but seeing him as 14 through 20 says that he is. That he wants to help that he is eagerly waiting, that he is listening for you to cry to him, that he is holding you up when you're falling down, that he's not expecting you to fix you. <laughs> yeah, every time I do Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times, O you people, pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge, this, the most amazing thing happens, okay? <laughs> like, I still struggle with legalism. I still struggle with all the old labels and messages and false beliefs. This is part of being a Christian. You're gonna, you gotta weed out the lies your whole life. But when I'm with him and I'm not being closed off and I'm not trying to fix me and pretend I don't have these problems because Lord, you just want my praise, you don't want my problems. When I sit down with Jesus and I tell him everything that I'm thinking, everything that I'm feeling, everything I'm going through, and trust him with it, then there's this huge relief. And he pulls out that snarly, thorny, choking weed of a lie that's wound its way in my mind and he pulls it out and he shows me his truth. He shows me who he really is, how he really sees me, how he really feels about me. And he does this to you too. He's waiting to do this to you too. He wants you to come to him with your pain. Okay, so how does therapy come into this? This knowing that I can talk to God about everything and not like hold stuff back and not try and pretend it's not there or you know just avoid it well before therapy before counseling i did not know i could talk to god like that but i know i'm not the only one who struggles with this so some of you maybe understand exactly what i'm talking about you think that because God is holy and pure and righteous that you can't just say anything to him. You can't just say what you're really thinking, what you're really feeling. You know, you're trying to filter yourself to be clean enough for him. But we don't filter ourselves and we don't cleanse ourselves. Jesus cleansed us by his blood. The Holy Spirit is cleansing us every day not us. We don't do it. So, one of the great things about therapy is being able to share with somebody your experiences in life, the things that hurt you, the things that bother you, the things that annoy you, your feelings, your thoughts, your, perspe uh, your perspectives, sorry, and have no condemnation. Like when you're talking to a counselor or a therapist, if they are a good one, at least a decent one, they don't sit there and tell you you're wrong. You shouldn't feel that way. It's wrong you feel that way. You're blowing this out of proportion, you know. They don't sit there and tell you you're making all of this up. I mean, you know, they're there to listen and to help guide you through all of these feelings, all of this pain, all of these experiences and baggage, and to come out 
to come out an overcomer. Not someone who is broken down by all of those things. Okay, so this video is a little longer than I would like it to be. So I'm going to split it up into two parts. And to hear the rest of this, please click to watch part two. And thank you for watching part one. Bye.